Hi guys, this is Mark Hart. Um, in this video, I want to show you guys how to take um, any character model from the Xbox One and the Xbox 360 from the Dead or Alive series and get it into 3DS Max. Um, you could also stick it in any program you want, like say Blender. It's not a big deal, okay? Because um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, format swapping between this format, that format, this format. And uh, I think Blender supports all those formats, I believe. Uh, you'll have to look for the plugins for those and for 3ds Max, both. Uh, but I do do believe they both similarly support whatever. Okay. Now let's see. This one supports 3ds. Yep, it supports Object. Yes. And all you re really need is um, MQO. MQO is actually a common format, so you should be able to find it. Okay. By the way, the new blender looks pretty sweet. Anyway, um, shoop, let's head over here. Um, <coughs> any tool you need for getting files and models, uh, you can find here on Entaxed. Uh, obviously, the URL for that is here. Okay, that's the base URL, and that's the post topic URL. Um, basically, they have the tools for modding, but we're only going to be interested with the importing into 3ds max as uh, you can do more with that personally you can you can see here in my render you can just manipulate the model in any way you want which is kinda cool so that's what I want to get to and uh, that's what the video is going to be showing you I'm also going to be doing the Xbox side Xbox one and the Xbox 360 side both of them are very complicated uh, Xbox one is a little bit less complicated I'll sh first show you guys the uh, old method, or not the old method, but the long old method for Dead or Alive uh, Ultimate 2 or 2 Ultimate for the Xbox One. That'll, gu that'll give you a base understanding of everything else that comes after that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I have all my models in a folder here called. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but uh, here's a, here's all the the model files from the games, except for this one. I think I'm missing these ones. Uh, okay, uh, to obtain these files, you would have to get the files off of your disk. Okay, so say you had a disk for Dead or Alive 3 for the Xbox One. Okay, um, to get the files off of that, you would need a uh, modded Xbox or modded Xbox or, or modded DVD drive for your computer. Either way, you need something that's somewhat illegal. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying that modding something is illegal, I'm just saying it's hard to obtain something because it's not exactly accepted in the market. Okay, uh, but you can find modded Xboxes, etc. Uh, although it would probably be easier to use a torrent, okay? Uh, but if you use a torrent, just understand that you do run the risk of getting caught for piracy. So take that at your own discretion. discretion. But anyway, that's the easiest way to get the files. Once you get the files, well, not files, it'll just be an ISO file. Uh, you can use various ISO tools. You can just Google it. You should be able to find millions of them. Um, for Xbox One, a, a good one is CXBX something something. Again, some dude on here, he uh, posted those tools for you, and you can use that to dump the files from the ISO. Uh, same thing with 360, only you'll be using another tool called WX360. It dumps the ISO files. Anyway, once you get those files from the disk or the ISO file, if you downloaded it, uh, all the model files are going to be actually stored in a file called AFS. So you can use AFS Explorer to obviously dump those files in the giant archive. Um, so yeah. Uh, kind of files you want to look for are the ones that have the character names in them, obviously. <laughs> um, I'll show you an example. Uh, so here's Dead Alive Ultimate. Um, IAN is called AYA012 to whatever costumes. So IAN, you have Jan Lee, Kazumi, uh, what's down here, Lee Fang, Tina. It's it's self explanatory. Self explanatory. This is Zach. So basically, three characters, three characters of the character's name. You take a wild guess. Okay, so yeah, those are the model files. That's what you need. Uh, we're going to be starting it with. Uh, yeah, we'll just start off with Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate first. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be using, to convert these, a tool called... Um, 
the hell is this? I got this thing called virus. No, this is the exporter. Yeah, funny. Alright, um, so yeah, I'm gonna be using a tool called DOAU exporter. Okay, got that. Uh, obviously you only have one option. Uh, from this I'm going to select a model file. Okay. Uh, and we'll just pick this fat guy, Bass. Okay. And it says how many objects and textures was exported. Whatever. Okay, and you close that now. Okay. Um, for only Dead or Live Ultimate, only this game, uh, your files are encrypted, so you need to get the, the de decryptor. And uh, who knows if they haven't posted on here. Anyway, Green Explorer will decrypt files for you, so you can use that as well. I know that for a fact that it decrypts. And Ninja Toolbox, that also decrypts. So instead of using AFS Explorer, you can actually use this program here called Boss AFS or Ninja Toolbox, which will also open up AF file and decrypt Dead or Alive Ultimate files for you. You can tell between the decrypted and non-decrypted because it'll have the squiggly in it. Squiggly 24 or something, whatever. This is only for this game. Dead or Alive 3 is not encrypted, so you can open up files easy, um, whatever. And Dead Live Beach Volleyball, not decrypted, so, or not not uh, encrypted. Sorry. So those are easy. It's only this game. Anyway, uh, let's carry on. Um, I open up Bass something something other something. So here, yeah, here it is. I'm just gonna remove that. Whatever. That's the file we just dumped. You can see that it's dumped two different types of file formats here. 3ds, obviously a 3d. S, uh, 3ds Max format for models, and DDS, which is a texture format. So texture textures are in DDS. Uh, it's not really supported by Windows, although it's <laughs> it's a native Windows format. Like DDS is used by Mac it's invented by Microsoft, so it's kind of stupid. That anyway, uh, well, oh, sorry, I'm ranting. Um, this is not Bass. This is this is Kazumi. Alright, let's try opening a different file here. <sighs> Export. Let's try Helena. There you go. So now we'll start with this. There you go. So these are Helena's textures. Some of them are black, though. I don't know why. Anyway, um, so you have your 3ds, your model file, and your texture file. Oh, yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, the the DDS files they're supported. They're not supported by Windows natively, although it's used by DirectX, which is the Windows graphics driver, which is silly way. It's not supported by Windows. So you'll you'll have to Google for, of course, this viewer. Which is the WTV version? I mean, the Woody's texture viewer. It'll view the DDS textures. You also want to look for maybe a thumbnail plugin, which would be nice. Um, and search for maybe a plugin for um, Paint Shop or Photoshop uh, if you want to edit any textures. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I do believe 3ds Max by default does support it. So you don't need a plugin for that. But if you did, I'm sure you could find it. Uh, there's tons of plugins for DDS. Okay, and as for the 3DS files, um, obviously 3DS Max supports it, and as well, Blender supports it. Okay. Now, the problem with these models is that they are they are all not. They don't form a proper model. Um, I'll show you this actually with Greed Explorer. Turn on single click and load 3D objects. Uh, so I'm just going to open up Helena's model here really quickly. Okay, so here's Helena or Helena, however you want to say it. Um, her model. Okay. 
Um, she is complete, although how we get her model is like this. You can see that the model is actually collapsed. That's what we call collapsed. Uh, the model is actually diced up in little pieces, like for example the head, or the breasts, the heads, the legs, hands, etc. The reason behind that is because, um, uh, say this is the shoulder. The shoulder moves, but maybe uh, some part of the body doesn't move like this. Maybe this doesn't move. This forearm well, this doesn't animate, it doesn't move. Well, it will animate, I mean, but it won't bend. So to conserve memory, they can store this differently than they would have to store something that th that would have to bend, basically. So these don't bend at all. They just bounce. Bounce, 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 bounce. So yeah, there's different different ways they can store different meshes that have to react different in the game. So they tried to get their memory optimization as best they could. So that's why the character is diced like that. If you're wondering, okay. But anyway, the fact is it's all diced up, and when you import it, it's like that. Um, nobody ever figured out how to get the position positioning information. It is there, um, but just no one's been able to figure it out. Um, yeah, so yeah. When you import your model into 3ds Max, it's going to look like this. Okay? But you, you notice that it's actually complete in Grid Explorer. Uh, the reason behind that is that you, uh, uh, Grid Explorer allows you to create scripting data for each character model file. So, say I have Helena, right? Uh, Helena's file is described in this script. It says for mesh object, uh, mesh object, whatever, the hair, the head, whatever, move to position, whatever, whatever. Okay. So basically, what someone has done is gone into 3ds Max and they've positioned Helena's model and then recorded the positioning information here. Okay. The problem is I don't have the scripts for this. For Max script. No. Um, they probably got lost along the way. The fact is, I don't have them. Um, I could make a converter to convert these coordinates to a Max script to import into here. I just I never looked at it because this format here is kind of kind of crude, and I'm not too good at creating a text brazer. So yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, Grid Explorer is the easy way to get the model, but again, I'm going to be showing you the difficult way. So, yeah. Um, that's not to say that I don't have any scripts. I, I do have a few scripts. Uh, I'm not sure if this is for Dead Live U. Or something. No. Uh, let's, let's see if I can get this to work. But see, this is not every character in here, and it's just a generic script. Like there's old like little sub costumes and everything. Uh, so if you open the script, you actually have to type in target insert path to models by the following characters. Okay, but they they failed to tell you that you have to have double slashes. And it's not all I forgot to tell you. All right, so if I try to import this. It should import the meshes for me, which it does sorta, but doesn't. So yeah, um, yeah, it's crap. <laughs> so yeah, the models don't get pop properly imported. So hmm. the other way to do it is obviously to import them all and reposition it yourself. Okay. Um, the thing is, with 3ds Max, you can't import a bunch at the same time, so you can only open up one at a time. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to do that because that's going to take too long. Uh, what I did was I wrote this max script here. Okay, 
it will um, import for you. Like it's it's a batch 3ds importer, so it'll import by batch, which means it'll import everything for you. So, okay, so just sit on import, and all you have to do is open up any file, and it'll just loop through everything else and import it along with that one file. So there you go. Okay, so there's the mesh as it was seen collapsed in Greed Explorer. Poof. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can see that there is a thing called MISC, miscellaneous, but actually, this is actually the shadow model used for calculating shadows, whatever. Okay. Low poly, this is used for reflections of water and floor. Uh, the, they don't actually use an actual reflection shader, they use what they uh, a reflection trick, which is where they have uh, a transparent surface, and you have the model parallel to your other model, and it creates a 3D uh, mirror effect. Yeah. And then of course you have the high po high, po high poly model, which is the main mesh model. Okay. So in here you have those three meshes combined. Okay. It's not as hard as you think. Obviously, uh, the lower the higher lower ranges here are the high mesh. Mid ranges are the low poly, and the, lo the low ranges are the shadow mesh. Okay, so it's not too difficult to separate. Uh, just select something and like halfway and pull it over. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, you would just position your model back into a T. Poof. 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 Okay, so that's actually a low poly model. That's high poly, high poly, high poly, high, high. That's low poly, that's, that's the head, that's the hair twice. Uh, I never figured out why they have the hair twice in there. Probably because it uses physics, I don't know. That's the boobs, that's low poly, that's the head, that's the torso. Uh, again, I've been working with Dare Live for a long time, so uh, it's probably easier for me just to like I can recognize these pretty easy. For you, it might be a little confusing, but it's pretty self-explanatory because the the parts are they're not that misleading. They're pretty pretty obvious. All for me, anyway. That's the uh, foot and whatever. I'm sure if you practice more with it, you'll get a better idea what everything looks like. That's a shin. Or a knee. So yeah, basically I just reassembled the entire model right now. And that took like, what, like a few minutes? Not even, well, there's still some more work to be done with it, but uh, basically that's the majority of it. Oh, wait, what the hell is, uh elbow or something. What's this? This is like a lock a locket. And what are these? Eyeball sockets? What are these? It's wrists. Eyeball sockets. And that's I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's the locket. Okay, we don't need that for now. Okay, um so that's basically um the model segmented or whatever. Looks like I missed two things here. Oh, I got it. No, I missed it. Oh, no. I don't need that. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Um, now I'm just going to line everything up. So I'm going to take one piece and center it, and the rest I'm going to attach to that using the snap tool. So if you right click, you can actually change the snapping options. Uh, I'm going to be using vertice snap. Okay, so when I uh, go into snap mode, I can just click on this, and it'll move based on vertice. Okay, uh, what's going on there? I'm missing a piece. Oh, I get it. it goes up here. And go down here. So yeah, um, not too difficult. Uh, once you get an idea of what you're doing, 
Um, this doesn't really take more than, say, 15 minutes, whatnot. This is just for assembly. Of course, there's a lot more you could do with the model for the rigging and all the other stuff, of course. So yeah, you get the idea. It's not terribly difficult. It's just a bunch... Just think of it as like a giant 3D puzzle. Uh, some things you'll obviously have to just eyeball, <laughs> literally. So just kind of position things and... Uh, Something like I obviously can't use the snap tool for the eyes. I'm just gonna have to kind of guess the position, but it's not a real big deal as long as you can align them properly and not make them look stupid. And it's okay. Okay, so that's uh, you would snap everything together. All right, so. Obviously, it's not textured, right? To, to, to get it textured, I'm going to save it first so that uh, the textures have a save position. And then uh, I'm going to reload it. So I'm just going to reopen the file. And uh, this is Max 8. So for me, it's activate all maps. If you're using a higher version of Max, like Max uh, 2012, I believe there's a menu or an option under view that says X view. Under that, it says uh, show all maps textured or something like that. They, they moved it to a submenu. And then it's basically the same thing. And the, the textures activate. Okay. So there, there, you, ha there you have it. So there's Helena's model. Um, <clears throat> it, obviously, um, it's blocky, right? So you can either use uh, edit. Well, yeah, you could use edit mesh. Uh, to weld it, and you also have to assign a mesh group of one. Okay. Uh, the problem with that is that you'll get uh, the seam here. Okay. Uh, this is basically a problem with the normals. You can see here we have double-sided polygons, and that again is an issue. To solve that, you would just uh, assign a different um, a different mesh group of two or something and that would clear it up okay okay so that's one way you can do it another way is to attach everything to one and do the same procedure that way you don't get that seam okay so now you attach everything as one big mesh it was just a single mesh and you again do another weld and assign a group of one. Okay, and you do the same thing with the reassigning. Okay, let's say you get rid of that uh, normal issue. Okay, obviously there's no seam between the cracks anymore. Okay, and lastly, the other way to do it would be to use the edit normal modifier. Uh, I can't go back all the way. All right. <clears throat> Let me just show you on the arm here. All right, so, so these are all separate meshes, okay. And uh, we can use edit normals. Just highlight that and weld by 001. Hide these. And now the seam is now gone. So it accomplishes the same thing. Depends how you want to do it. If you want to have a single mesh or you want to have a diced up mesh still. Hmm. Now the benefits behind having a, a diced up mesh is you'll be able to uh, reuse the head head uh, morph targets. Uh, which I'll get into later. Um, but yeah, that's not really important right now. So that's, what time is it? Uh, uh, 24 minutes in. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's importing the long way. Let's reset. No. Now I'm going to show you how to import the easy way. 
uh, we're going to use um, this program here. We're going to use uh, 3D Ripper DX or DX 3D, 3D Ripper, whatever you want to call it. Well, wow, it's kind of backwards. Anyway, we can use this program to rip from the uh, model viewer here. So to do that, uh, we're, we're going to first create a directory that we want to store our files in. So I just add the old one. I'll just call it dump again. Copy that directory. Okay, so to fill this thing out, you want to type in the directory path of Grid Explorer. Uh, for, I'm using Windows 7, so I just took... Uh, took the uh, target directory from here and I pasted it there then I just uh, pasted it in the directory of this thing here and all I did was change the capture key to F8 okay take note of the capture key because that will capture the model okay then you just hit launch and Grid Explorer will pop up I have to enable 3D mode and turn on a single click so we'll just go open up Helena's, Helena's model here. Helena, okay. Oops. Put Helena's model. Okay, so there's Helena's model. Um, you, see, you can see it says ready to capture. So if you press F8, it'll, it'll say, you know, taking a capture or whatever, and it says it where it saved it. Okay. All right, that's done. So you can close that. Now under dump, you can see uh, the textures got saved. Okay, and uh, you have a file called 3dr. Um, shoot, I forgot to note this, but uh, if you 3ds 3d Ripper DX is designed for 3ds Max. Okay, if you don't have 3ds Max, then you're going to want to turn on Capture Wave File. Okay, and that'll create a Object, an object file instead of a, a 3D fire, 3DR file. That's only if you're using Blender or something. Okay. But I'm going to be using uh, 3ds Max. Okay. So when I go to import, I can use the 3D Ripper import plugin. Uh, this gets installed automatically when you install the program. Uh, so this is the import here. Uh, just make sure you click on recommended values. Oh, I don't have any doesn't matter and then um, make sure it looks something like this and hit okay there you go so there's uh, Helena um, she's fully imported fully positioned and whatever okay again her positioning is based on the positioning that somebody else made so this positioning could even be wrong who knows because somebody else did it and they just saved it to a text file and put it into Greed Explorer. Okay, but this saves us the trouble of doing it ourselves. Obviously, we've now taken someone else's coordinates and we've imported the model through a capture. Okay, so same dealio, model's just as fine. Okay, no different. Uh, you'll probably have to fix some of the texture problems. Maybe it's not. Uh, no, it looks okay. Yeah. So this is probably the easiest and most ideal way to get a capture from Dead or Alive 3, Dead or Alive Ultimate, and Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball by using 3DS Ripper and Grid Explorer. Easiest, easiest way. You got it? But um, the reason why I showed you the old way is so that you would understand how Grid Explorer works and also how you're going to understand how the 360 BART 360, 360 part of the video is so complicated because we don't have the luxury of Great Explorer pretty much <laughs> alright so now we're going to be moving on to obviously the 360 stuff so Dead or Alive 4 and Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball 2 um, if you have any more questions about getting models from Dead or Alive Ultimate Dead or Alive 3 or Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball 1 for the Xbox, let me know. I'll get back to you. Um, as for the later versions of Digital Life on the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, and the Dreamcast, no, I don't know of any tools to get them, but yes, I think there were some before. 
Either way, for Dreamcast, you can use 3D Ripper on that because it's a Dreamcast emulator called Dreamcast. No, it's called Null DC. Yeah, Null DC. Uh, P uh, P PS2, there's PSSX2 or something like that, but it doesn't really work on it. Mm, so, yeah. You can get models if you wanted, but anyway, uh, Dead Alive Ultimate includes Dead Alive 1 and Dead Alive uh, 2 Remake. So you pretty much have all the models from 1 to 4. So you really don't need the old systems. Okay. So that's import for that. And I'm just going to quickly rush in and show you guys how to import from uh, Dead Alive 4 and Dead Alive. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's go over here. Alright, so I'm going to start off easy. So, um, yeah. So here's Gnosis. Um, hopefully, in the future, it will support Dead Alive 4. But right now, it only supports Dead Alive Beach Volleyball 2. So, Gnosis, again, you can find on Antax, yada, 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 yada. Uh, you can open up the files, and here, TPR, instead of XPR, it uses TPR for Dead Alive uh, 4. Or, sorry, not Dead Alive 4, I mean their live beach volleyball too. You can just click on this and obviously Gnosis will view the model fully textured and fully positioned for you. Okay. So here's a body, obviously beach volleyball, it's about bikinis. So they have a uh, a base bare mesh and then they have the overlaying bikinis with the head. So you have a head model, you have a base mesh model and you have a various amount of bikinis or swimsuits, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, this program obviously positions it for you, uh, but not it's not user scripted. This actually does get the bone skeleton and the bones, uh, sorry, the uh, vertex skinning, so the model will actually fully move and all that other stuff. And it also gets gets the morph targets for the breast animation. Um, I believe the author did that to show how ridiculous the animation is. It, I don't even know. That's just too ridiculous. But anyway, um, it does that. And it also supports exports or export to many different formats. So obviously, if you're using Blender, you're uh, able to import to Blender. Uh, formats that support bones and skin are MD5 mesh, SMD, and uh, PSK. You can most likely find SMD importer for Blender if you're using Blender. Otherwise, you can use the MD5 Mesh and the MD5 Mesh Importer plugin for 3ds Max or SMD as well. But uh, otherwise, you can just use Object. It's what widely used on every other program. Again, you can uh, select what sort of textures you want: uh, TGA, JPEG, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory, and that's how you export the balls from this. But the problem is, again, only supports their live uh, beach volleyball two at the moment. Hopefully I can uh, persuade uh, Mr. Adult to support your life 4 as well. And then that way we wouldn't have to do this jumping through hoops thing. But anyway, uh, I'm going to be showing you now how to import your life 4 models, which is a total drag, and that's why I left it for last. And uh, I'll just show it to you guys quickly because it's just it's just a waste of time, but um, I on my forum a bunch of a bunch of uh, of the members they're actually trying to uh, import all the models systematically. So this guy be like, okay, I'll do some of these, or I'll do some of these, or I'll do some of these. So we we at one point we were trying to use this crappy method to import all the Dead Life Four models, but we just I don't know. I think we got like halfway and gave up. So anyway, um, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the Dead Life Four models now. Right, so we use this Japanese program, again, posted on NTAX, Japanese program. For the Japanese program, it heavily uses a modified version of Pantheon. So you have to first install base uh, installation of Pantheon, then the WX Pantheon uh, modification. I, I think he, he has got them here, I think. So after you install those, you can download the base program, which is this. Uh, what I did is I just created a shortcut. And then I edited, went to properties, and went to target. I changed it to tpr main dash py dash gui. And I just hit OK. And then from there, when you hit run, it'll boot up the uh, the tool. 
because it's based off Pantheon and it runs for the console. But anyway, this is the GUI. And uh, anything you want to open, you actually have to copy to this directory. You can't uh, you can't go open and just open any file. It has to be within the same directory. So we're just going to take a DOA4 model. Uh, so let's see, uh, do we have four here? And we'll just take any kind of model I can find. It's head mesh. Uh, what's not head? No, that's, that should be a head mesh. Yeah, so let's take this for example. Alright, so let's I am. Oh, I don't know if that matters, but the tick on DOA4. This thing also supports DOAX for whatever it matters, but Gnosis uh, is way better than, than using this. <sighs> Oops, error invalid RB. Oh, that was kind of random. Anyway, um, there's the uh, meshes here. Uh, to import, uh, again, like I was saying in Dead or Alive U, um, all the all the Dead or Alive games are like that. All the meshes are diced. They're in little sub parts, and around uh, 60 to 100 little objects. Um, this program for getting Dead or Alive 4 models doesn't do it automatically. You can do export textures, and that'll get you all the textures at once. Okay, that, that gets you all the textures at once. Uh, but it doesn't su doesn't support exporting all the meshes at once. So to get a mesh for object one, probably probably like a neck piece or something, to highlight object mesh 29, then you have to select uh, vertex buffer, then in index buffer zero. So dun 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 dun, and then go to export, then do it again dun dun. Dun 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 export 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 I believe I think that's how this program works. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that's the only way to get a mesh file out of it. Alright. Um gotta get rid of this directory. Okay, so once you get that done, once you do that a hundred times over, <laughs> okay, um, actually, I'm just going to forewarn you, um, there are actually a mismatch amount of vertex buffers to your index buffer, okay, uh, so that's why it's not auto automatic, because I don't think they found a, a way to link these properly automatically, so they left it kind of like user operated, so at one point you'll get to a point where like a bunch of these are the same size you can just skip those and then pick one and skip the rest okay so if you find duplicates you most likely have to skip it but sometimes the duplicates you actually need because there are more of these and there are these so some of these they oh shit like 80, 80 something 90 something have to be skipped okay so just keep that in mind some of these are duplicates and they can be skipped I'm not sure if that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if your mesh will be screwed up or not when you export it. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where those mesh pieces went. Okay, so that's zero. Zero, 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 zero. Export. Mat offset not. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You have to hit a mat. Oh my god. <gasps> okay, so you have to highlight a material to. So you gotta go dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Alright, so this is the, the M, MP, MPO, whatever. Okay. So, whatever. You don't have uh, 3ds Max you're using Blender. You're gonna have to use the uh, the official MQO program, which is uh, Metasguka or something like that. Okay, there's an English version of this program, um, but uh, I don't know. I'm using the trial version, so you can't export to a different format. I don't think. Just kind of stupid. So we'll just try it anyway. So here's the imported mesh. Okay. 
It's just a bow. I don't know if I can save. They support 3DS and object. Yeah. So, uh, you may have to buy the program. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. For me, I'm using 3DS Max, so... All I have to do is resave it as an older MPO, MKO, overwrite it, and then I can just import it through 3ds Max. So I can just rip it over here and toss it in. Where would it go? I was messed up. I just saw it and it disappeared. There it is. Alright, so that's that's the bow. Okay. So anyway, the good thing about this program uh shit going kinda of long here. Um is that it'll it'll import the positioning information properly for you. Um so yeah, this is a bad example. It takes too long to show you, but um, the model will be properly built like it was in Gnosis. So when you import all these little pieces, the positioning information is there for you, so you don't have to use Snap and move everything around, which is good. So even though this is really tedious and stupid, um, once it's in, the work's already done for you, and the model is there, okay? Which is good, which is nice. Um, but still, this is just this is just too much, okay? If you're really desperate for a Dead Life 4 model, here you go. Have fun, guy. Uh, again, if you're check out Dark Matter, my form. It's possible somebody's already converted it for you, and you can just download it and do whatever. Okay. All right, and so that's Dead Life 4, Dead Life Beach Volleyball, supported by Gnosis. Great. Um, uh, if you have Gnosis, uh, I'll tell you what. Give the author a. If he put his email in here, no, he didn't. Anyway, <clears throat> I believe the topic. No, this is another guy's topic. Uh, this guy, he also made a converter, um, but it only does their live um, beach volleyball two, and it also does Ninja Gaiden two. But Gnosis also does Ninja Gaiden two too. Two 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 two. Yeah, uh, Ninja Gaiden is also supported in uh, Gnosis, so his tool doesn't really matter because it, all it does is export the object. As Gnosis will give you full view and give you skeleton and all that stuff. So, but anyway, in here, um, yeah, just try to request for like Dead Alive for support or something or whatever. The author is really he's he's. Really great guy. He does a lot of projects, though. So, um, but I'm sure if he recognizes a lot of people are really interested, he'll probably look into it. But anyway, Sester so Live Beach Volleyball Two. Again, for the Xbox One, you have DOA Three, DOA U, and DOA X, all supported by by uh, Greed Explorer. Fortunately, no there's no export function, so you're just going to use 3D Ripper. So that's how you get models into 3D's Max. Uh, for all 3ds, or for all Dead or Alive games across Xbox and Xbox 360. Oh, it's getting late here. It's like one o'clock. <sighs> all right. Um, I know this video ran late. Sorry about that. Um, no, I'm gonna make another video, <clears throat> and that video is going to outline how to make a render like my background here. Um, so taking the character model. Um, so see, because the majority of the, the Dare Live models, they don't have proper skeletons or skinning. You can't move them automatically like you do in Gnosis. Like this is already set up. It's got uh, it's got the bones in there and whatever, right? But uh, the other models, they don't. You're just you're just getting a, a basic mesh. Um, I'm not gonna be showing you Blender, but I'm gonna be showing you 3ds Max side. You're showing you how to rig the model. Uh, set up the material system and rig it something like this, and you can make renders. Okay, now that's really complicated. That's more specific to 3ds Max. And actually, I may, I may do it in Blender. I might 
might be fun to do in Blender. Maybe. So that'll be the next video, okay? Uh, but this video is primarily showing you how to get it into whatever edit editing system you want, okay? Because I'm a big fan of uh, fan-made renders. Um, actually, if you guys want to join this forum, uh, DOA World, uh, these guys are actually, it's like the best forum out there right now. Uh, before it was DOA Central, that place is getting really run down, really, personally. So yeah, uh, sent to this, this place, um, there's actually guys still working on... Uh, making 3D renders for the, for the uh, DOA series and all that stuff. This guy actually made his own model in Blender, and it's, uh, it looks actually pretty sweet. It does, actually. Yeah, I don't care too much for the belly button, but otherwise, the, the model's pretty sweet. You did a good job on it. Uh, so yeah, sign up to this place. A uh, bunch of guys doing a bunch of fan-made 3D, uh, 3D renders of uh, the DOA series. Uh, you guys want to get into it and pitch in, that'd be awesome. So that's cool. So yeah, this is a great form. Uh, again, you also have my form for hacking. Well, not really hacking. Mostly we just uh, share 3D models. This place is for digital live, uh, whatever you want to know. And tax is the hacking form. So you want to do hacking, go to there. Right, so that's everything. I uh, don't know what else to say. If you're looking for a specific tool that these guys forget, uh, forgot to um, post, let me know. And I'll dig it out of my folder. Obviously, I have a lot of the tools. Uh, here and here, here and there somewhere. So yeah, that's the video. Um, story took so long again. Uh, I think I said everything that needs to be said. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, later.